The so-called pre-Columbian civilizations are those that developed in Central and South America prior to the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492. The best known among them are the Inca, Aztec, and Maya civilizations. But not much is left of the Aztec cities, since the capital Tenochtitlan was destroyed by the conquistadors and covered by the colonial center of Mexico City, the site of Teotihuacan, 50 kilometers from Mexico, is the last remaining vestige, excluding the Codex. The research on the civilization is thus based on the Codex, books painted by the Aztec themselves, and the writings of the conquistadors, like Hernán Cortés, and chroniclers from the 16th and 17th century. Most of them were made before the late 16th century. They depict objects, characters, and shapes in line with very specific conventions. They put concepts into imagery. Here, for example, the billow emanating from a character's mouth symbolizes speech. What we do know about the Aztecs is that they were first nomads. They settled in the Mexico Valley in the early 16th century. From their capital, they erected an empire, conquering neighboring lands and forming alliances with other city-states. Aztec civilization was a latecomer on the pre-Columbian scene, and its own culture was linked to older traditions. The Aztecs arrived on the high central plateau in the 13th century, or the beginning of the 14th, according to the translations of the text. In fact, it is a small group of migrants who probably came from the northwestern confines of Mesoamerica. Through their warlike qualities and a system of alliances, mostly but not only matrimonial, they came to establish themselves as the head of all the other cities and take power. This is a small group of migrants who arrive from the north and pass through the city of Tula, the Toltec capital. They stay there a certain time. This trip to Tula is extremely important because the Aztecs are able to obtain a form of Mesoamerica legitimacy. Like Teotihuacan, as the Toltecs themselves claim to be the heirs of Teotihuacan, they arrive from the north of the basin and will enter a valley where there are many lakes. This is a region that is very favorable for agriculture, for human settlements, so it has been highly populated for a long time. They try to find a place to settle. They will clash with the cities on the banks, and some of these cities will hire them as mercenaries to take advantage of their warlike qualities. But that quickly turns bad. Since the Aztecs are known for their brutality, this is what the texts say, and for practicing outrageous human sacrifices. For these reasons, they are chased from all the cities on the banks, and they are forced to seek refuge on a tiny island located in the center of Lake Tishikoko. This is where they will discover a sign sent to them by their main deity, Huitzilopochtli, god of the sun and more. This sign is an eagle perched on a cactus in the middle of devouring, according to the traditions, a prickly pear, the fruit of the cactus, which is a symbolic representation of the human heart. The Spanish tell us that it is a serpent, which would be the equivalent of evil in Western thought. So they decide that it is here that the gods tell them to establish their temple. The Aztec believed they were created by the winged snake god called Quetzalcoatl, who descended into the underworld of the dead and sprayed the bones of the ancestors with his own blood to bring them back to life. It is known from excavations that the island was inhabited before the arrival of the Aztecs. Certainly not very popular, but the Aztecs did not move into a completely unpopulated area. So the city, Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital, was created in the middle of the lake. 
sur le plan de this will cause de challenges for urban planning in terms of control of the level of the lake's waters because it is the region where it rains a lot in the rainy season. Revanche, en sèche, en sèche, and on the other hand, the dry longue. season is very long, et, uh, with the due variation donc, of the lake which they will have to manage. Va gérer. Et donc, euh, les Aztecs vont mettre au point des systèmes euh, très complexes. The Aztecs will develop highly complex systems of locks and aqueducts to bring drinking water to the island and construct a lakeside city, lake -side city which, at the, the moment of the conquest, will amaze the Spaniards with its beauty, its cleanliness, euh, and the organization of its neighbourhood. The Aztec used writing, knew how to make paper, and practiced astronomy. Trade was very developed throughout the empire and the capital held huge markets. Au début, ils contrôlent très peu et donc ils sont first, plutôt entourés d'ennemis. They control very Mais little. Dès qu'ils font de leur Indeed, they are surrounded by enemies. Cité, uh, de, as des soon as they create their dynasty, they request that one of the cities on the banks to give them a sovereign. Pour eux, de, this là is aussi, a way for them to gain a kind of legitimacy in the basin dans, of Mexico. Mexico. Et puis ensuite, à la fois par la guerre, euh, notamment avec euh, After that, les Tepanèques, euh, ou Tepanèques, avec un système d'alliance par exemple le Texcoco, ils vont euh, réussir à, à progressivement s'imposer. Alors, il y a un tournant majeur, c'est en 1428 la création de la Triple Alliance, ou euh, par un accord d'aide mutuelle agreement between euh, the city of Texcoco, la cité de Texcoco, la cité de Tenochtitlan, et la cité de Tlacopan, on the western side of the basin of Mexico. Occidental du bassin de Mexico. Donc un, un accord d'aide militaire est signé entre ces trois cités cities, et va permettre l'expansion euh, de l'empire outside of the basin of Mexico. du bassin de Mexico. Alors rapidement, les Aztèques euh, vont prendre la tête de cette triple alliance, jusqu'à pratiquement dominer les autres cités. L'objectif de l'expansion aztèque, il est principalement économique, euh, et donc c'est ce qui va permettre à la population de Tenochtitlan de bénéficier d'une certaine prospérité. De, une certaine prospérité. Les Aztèques vont développer les leur propre entité politique, politique, politique depuis donc la fondation, puis le début de l'expansion de la base de Mexico. Anyway, they're forced to rely on other allies, alliés, up to the formation of the Aztec Empire that the Spanish will encounter. The Aztecs claim a double origin, which you find elsewhere in the text. The hunter-warriors in the north and the sedentary farmers in the basin of Mexico. This represents the two economic bases of the empire, the two great social categories, the producers and the predators. They're the warriors who deal with the tribes. Progressivement, Gradually, les the Aztecs will take control of the entire south of the basin and all the areas of grazed fields or chinampas, which are particularly rich agriculturally. Thus, the Aztecs practice a political expansion which is not based solely on religious or military criteria, but on economic ones. From 1420 or 1430, the Aztec expansion leaves the basin of Mexico and does so by a policy semble seems highly calculated. Calculé, euh, the Aztecs take control of the bordering regions little by little and the conquests prof, accumulate progressively uh, until the arrival of the Spaniards. Mesure, uh, jusqu'à l'arrivée des Espagnols, uh, c'est-à-dire que uh, la politique d'expansion aztèque that is to say that the Aztec policy of expansion truly aimed to control an entire collection of territories in order to acquire riches like cotton, uh, cocoa, marine resources, cacao, etc. Resources marine, etc. L'expansion est de plus en plus dirigée par The expansion par is increasingly Mexico, led by Mexico City. That is to say, Tenochtitlan, the two other allies taking a progressively secondary place. Nous sommes face à un, euh, un empire We are facing an expanding empire with territories under its control. Et il y a eu d'abord, on a d'abord parlé d'empire aztèque. At first, we talked about an Aztec empire, but then we took a step back, saying that it was a more or less uncertain expansion, and to speak of an empire was a little audacious. The latest work seemed to show that there is a policy of expansion that is quite organized and structured and meets specific goals. 
The capital, Tenochtitlan, was one of the biggest cities in the world, with more than 200,000 people. Progressively, the city-state became the most powerful on the central plateau of Mexico. It first dominated the Mexico Valley, then progressively extended its influence from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean coast. The Aztec, to affirm their superiority and to better integrate themselves, assimilated pre-existing cultures with their own. They claimed to be the descendants of the Toltec. In the legends, the Toltec are said to be at the origin of all civilizations. They are called the Master Builders. The later Aztec civilization thus thought of the Toltec as their predecessors on both an intellectual and cultural level. Immediately before the Aztecs, there were the Toltecs. We know today that it is a population that developed between 950 and 1250 at least, and that Tula is their capital. Historical tradition makes it so that later populations of the Basin of Mexico always refer to the Toltecs as the great founders. At the moment when the Aztecs take power in the Basin of Mexico, in the beginning of the 15th century, there is only 100 years before the arrival of the Spaniards. During this period, an entire tradition is put into place which values the ancient cities, in which the Aztecs will take their place in the continuity. At the same time, they're committed to clearly mark their differences and to say that they came from somewhere else. The Aztec took over the abandoned Toltec city of Teotihuacan. This site is the only physical trace that remains of the Aztec, and was not even built by them. Only Tenochtitlan, the capital, was their work, but it disappeared under the foundations of Mexico City. At Teotihuacan, which is the most famous pre-Columbian city-state, it is clear that the word Toltec refers to master builders, and when the Aztec arrived here, they saw it too. Its ruins are located about 50 kilometers northeast of Mexico City. The city reached its peak glory between 150 and 450 AD. It then had a population of over 150,000. Teotihuacan civilization was very close to Mayan civilization and strongly influenced the populations that later appeared in Mexico, like the Aztec. Teotihuacan, at the moment when the city emerges, is already the fruit of a long history of people who have settled. They've become great farmers with an economy based on the growth of corn in particular. Little by little, they will give birth to this city, which in the space of one or two centuries will become this great metropolis, the greatest political and economic power in all of Mexico. The city was designed around a central axis, the Avenue of the Dead. On either side of the avenue stand pyramids and temples devoted to the gods. It is divided into four quadrants. It is the symbolic representation of the world on a horizontal plane. Note the absence of all military structures and fortifications within the city. Teotihuacan was abandoned in the seventh century, perhaps following a revolt of the people against the leading class. On prend bien conscience we are well aware that this city has lasted for seven centuries and has known many changes. Do not think of it as a moment frozen in time. There are monuments that are built, that are expanded, and others that are destroyed. The city has moved, operated, and developed in an extraordinary way. What remains a great mystery for the archaeologists is the way in which it collapses, disappearing completely during the seventh century, until scientists uncovered it in our days. The 
Ce qui est frappant avec cette ville de Teotihuacan, c'est que cet urbanisme, avec un plan en damier, euh, bâti sur un axe nord-sud et est-ouest, structuré par des grands monuments que, que sont notamment les pyramides de la Lune et la pyramide du Soleil, qui montrent un pouvoir politique très fort, euh, capable de rassembler plus de 100 000 habitants en un même endroit, dans une économie qui leur a fait plus de 300 000 habitants en un même endroit, et surtout qui va avoir un, un pouvoir coercitif sans doute très fort, pour que ce plan d'urbanisme reste très fort à ce point. En effet, c'est une cité florissante qui domine véritablement la Mésoamérique, en 3e, 4e siècle, et à partir du 6e siècle, cette cité va s'effondrer et disparaître, et être abandonnée. Alors, on a mis plusieurs causes sur ce plan d'urbanisme, and be abandoned. Many causes have been suspected for the decline and disappearance of such a power. Currently, archaeologists attribute it to climate change, saying that a long drought could possibly have destabilized the agricultural economy of the region, and that the agricultural region of Teotihuacan could no longer continue like this. We talked about foreign policy reasons or something else. And in fact, at the end of Teotihuacan, we see a certain number of buildings that are burned down. But even here, strictly speaking, we have no trace of any civilization that was powerful enough to destroy Teotihuacan. We also talk about internal problems. One can imagine elites or other groups clashing in the interior of the city itself to the point of causing its implosion. Et sans doute qu'au final, c'est la conjonction de tous ces, de tous ces éléments, des end, problèmes économiques, des combinaisons de tous ces éléments, des problèmes politiques intérieurs, des de drought, des agressions intérieures, qui font qu'effectivement, à un moment donné, la société disparaît. So et c'est ainsi que les Aztèques, moment, au moment de leur arrivée dans le bassin de Mexico, ont bien sûr pris connaissance de cette cité en découvrant les ruines. Et ils ont découvert des ruines. They will discover it in ruins, and like many other political stories from around the world, they will finish by writing their own history and mythology on top of the previous site. They will give birth to their god at Teotihuacan, which is one of the subtlest ways on the religious and economic level to join these new countries with an already existing territory. Et on observe des choses assez fascinantes. Par exemple, c'est que les Aztèques eux-mêmes vont être des sortes d'archéologues, ce qui vont eux-mêmes exhumer certains objets de Teotihuacan, notamment un très beau masque caractéristique Ils vont le récupérer à Teotihuacan, le prendre à la location de Mexico City, leur propre capitale, et le mettre dans une de leurs propres pyramides, comme une relique en quelque sorte. Coming from Tenochtitlan, their capital, on the other side of the lake, the Aztec found enough in the forgotten city to satisfy their ambitions. What must have impressed them a lot is the existence of these great pyramids that had turned back into hills, but completely isolated hills in the middle of a plain will attract your attention. And they knew perfectly well that there were ancient pyramids and temples. It was very close to their home, something like 40 kilometers away. So it's completely logical that the Aztecs set a certain number of their origin myths in Teotihuacan itself. It's from Teotihuacan that in Aztec thought the sun and the moon appeared in our world. De notre monde à nous. Et les Aztèques ont été les premiers à réaliser des fouilles à Teotihuacan, par exemple, des offrandes dans le temple de Mexico, un certain nombre d'objets qui étaient des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, parce qu'un certain nombre d'objets qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui sont des offrandes dans le temple de Teotihuacan, qui the Aztec thus took over the site, its buildings and gods, as well as all the techniques used by their predecessors, and integrated them into their own culture to make the new city evolve and develop. Pyramide, en fait, est le support d'un temple, c'est-à-dire qu'au sommet de ces pyramides, qui sont d'ailleurs plus écrasées que les pyramides égyptiennes, ont été lancées. Au sommet de ce, cette pyramide est édifié un temple où se pratiquent un certain nombre de rituels et notamment euh, certains sacrifices humains. 
La symbolique de la pyramide est en fait une forme de représentation des montagnes qui d'ailleurs entourent le site de Teotihuacan et qui sont considérées comme des lieux de vie, sources de l'eau en particulier et particulièrement honorées par les anciens Mexicains. The city stretched out over 30 square kilometers. It started being built in the early pre-classic period around the year 300 BC. The Pyramid of the Sun was completed in 150. To the north, the Avenue of the Dead leads to the Pyramid of the Moon, 46 meters high, behind which rises an ancient volcano. Les deux pyramides donc, de la Lune et du Soleil, noms qui ont été donnés par les archéologues au XIXe siècle, sont érigés dans les tout, premiers, euh, les tout premières années euh, de notre ère. Euh, les récentes fouilles qui ont été menées à la pyramide de la Lune, au nord du site, donc, montrent site, en fait un processus complexe. complexe. Et on a, on a pu observer à partir de tunnels creusés dans cette pyramide que celle-ci avait été construite en, en sept étapes. En fait, il y a eu sept pyramides successives qui ont chaque fois été agrandies à la manière des, des poupées russes. Les, Building à partir upon des the first small pyramid, a second was constructed, then a third, then a fourth, up to the seventh, which is the one we can see today. These constructions are spread between the beginning of our era and the fourth century. And what the recent excavations have shown is that on the completion of these new constructions, they conducted human and animal sacrifices as a kind of Les fouilles ont ainsi montré euh, des caches the digs dans lesquelles euh, des, des, des fosses dans lesquelles which, in one case, euh, à tel endroit plus de 15 were individus ont été décapités ou ont tiré les mains attachées dans le dos. Ailleurs, on a pu trouver des squelettes de, de, de jaguars, des squelettes de loups raptors, ou encore des rapaces qui, dans certains cas, visiblement, ont été enterrés vivants. Le tout All this accompanied by exceptional funeral offerings, obsidian knives, statuettes, and masks, which makes this discovery an exceptional event for the archaeological world on the level of understanding these societies and their practice of human sacrifices. In front of the edifice is the Moon Plaza, lined with platforms that conform to a rigorous symmetry. The pyramid was devoted to the god of storms. The Pyramid of the Sun is 65 meters high. The Pyramid of the Sun is a pyramid oriented to the west, thus towards the setting sun. Sur la façade de la pyramide, on the façade of the pyramid, there is a door that gives access to a long tunnel that goes deep into the bowels of the pyramid and ends at a chamber designed like a flower with four petals, with four rooms which is located exactly below the platform at the summit of the pyramid. De la, de la summitale de la pyramid. Et donc on pense que la pyramide it is therefore thought pour that the pyramid was built to cover this cavity, which was the original site of worship in Teotihuacan. Unfortunately, this space was constantly visited, notably by the Aztecs. We find Aztec ceramics there. Donc, euh, the Aztecs themselves probably practiced rituals there, so we don't know what occurred there originally. Were there funerals or high-ranking people in the hierarchy of Teotihuacan? Was there a spring? We don't know. It is a place that has been too upset since the ancient times, but it is certainly quite an important place for the rituals practiced at the beginning of the Teotihuacan underneath the Pyramid of the Sun. It is worth mentioning that grottoes played an important role in the Mesoamerican religions. They symbolize fertility, the site of man's creation, and also represent access to the underworld of the dead. At the intersection of the Avenue of the Dead and the Great East-West Road stands a huge complex that archaeologists call the Citadel. From 150 AD, the citadel became the nerve center of the city. It is the point where the two great avenues that oriented the entire city crossed. It is located in the southeast corner of the intersection. This is a great set of platforms that surround an enormous square in the center, in which there is the pyramid of the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, which itself is bordered to the north and the south by two sets of palaces. 
de deux ensembles palacieux. Les résultats des fouilles n'ont pas confirmé qu'il s'agissait de The results of the digs have not confirmed that they were the homes of people with major political powers. Et puis, petit à petit, avec le temps, Gradually, cette citadelle, cette citadelle, cette citadelle, citadelle and this is why we call it that, was surrounded by platforms qui, to restrict qui entry. Évidemment les entrées. Mais, et, et sur ces plateformes, il y a une série de On petits sous-bassements pyramidaux qui, qui étaient surmontés certainement de temps. Et euh, entre euh, les sous-bassements pyramidaux du sommet, au fur et à mesure de la ville, ils vont se construire des murs avec l'évolution de la ville, jusqu'à la fin de son existence, on construit des murs. Donc ça devient quasiment fortifié, effectivement. The complex occupies a surface of 16 hectares and forms a surrounding wall 400 meters long along the side, giving it the appearance of a citadel, though it had no defensive role. At the back of the esplanade stands the temple, a step pyramid flanked by two residential buildings. La citadelle, c'est un espace en creux, the donc elle a à peu près le, la même surface que la, la pyramide du soleil, mais en creux, donc it's une cour surbaissée. Uh, au it centre de laquelle se trouve courtyard. un temple, in the uh, qui est le temple du serpent à plumes, où located. on va retrouver les fameuses fresques qui This représentent le serpent à plumes frescoes, et la divinité mythonnaire, euh, la divinité au cercle oculaire, que les Aztecs plus tard appellent le nom Tlaloc. Ce sont les bas-reliefs pré-colombiens de l'art pré-colombien. Cette décoration est spécifique à Teotihuacan. The heads of reptiles jutting out from a winged body alternate with sculptures that are difficult to define in geometric shapes. This work required considerable means. Each head weighs no less than four tons. In the time of the city's glory, these sculptures were painted. The Aztec practiced human sacrifice as well as cannibalism. They sometimes ate their enemies and the sacrificed victims. The skulls of the victims were left on display by the hundreds. Il y avait effectivement une certaine pratique There was some practice of human sacrifice. C'était certainement quelque chose qui était assez exceptionnel et devait avoir lieu fondamentalement lors de très très grandes cérémonies et dans des circonstances bien particulières. On avait toutes sortes d'autres sacrifices possibles pour ne pas forcément avoir recours à ces sacrifices. Mais ça existait avant et ça n'existera pas après, bien entendu. The sacrifices constantly required new victims, and so the Aztecs left on expeditions to take prisoners of war. But victims could also be taken from the general population, with their consent, for it was believed that the sacrificed would depart to a better world. À propos du sacrifice humain, les textes évoquent the la text describe the recurrence of human sacrifices. Qui, selon les, According les to Spanish sources, for the inauguration of a great temple, there were 80,000 sacrifices. Donc c'est un chiffre, on a toujours considéré que c'était un chiffre qui avait été gonflé par les Espagnols. Ceci dit, l'archéologie nous montre que le sacrifice humain était effectivement pratiqué. That said, archaeology shows us that human sacrifice was practiced. On a retrouvé, notamment sur les sols de stucs, In particular, we find stucs on the floor with particularly high levels of hemoglobin. And there is no doubt that the floors were regularly watered with blood and statues as well. Y compris les sculptures. Each divinity had its own specific rite. Some victims had their heart ripped out for the sun to raise each morning. Children were drowned for the rains to be abundant. Some were skinned in honor of the god of renewal and vegetation, and their skins were then worn by the priests. Aztec worshipped the sun, the rain, the moon, and many other gods. Their religion was a mix of polytheism, shamanism, and animism, inherited from the more ancient civilizations of central Mexico. It was a combination of the astral religion of the nomads and the agrarian religion of the sedentary peoples of central Mexico. Le Panthéon. The Aztec pantheon Aztec is all the more complex, as the Aztecs exhibit a great liberalism. That is to say that they adopt the gods of groups that they conquer very easily and integrate them, which is also a manner of integrating the groups. 
qu'il y a une divinité principale, la divinité tutélaire de l'Aztec qui s'appelle Huitzilopochtli, dieu de la guerre, dieu du soleil, euh, du soleil à son zénith. Huitzilopochtli euh, signifie le colibri de la gauche. C'est un dieu qui est très peu représenté dans, dans la statuaire. Euh, en revanche, on a de très hand, nombreuses représentations des autres divinités, de la divinités, divinité de la pluie, like Tlaloc, le Tlaloc, the masculine god of rain, de la pluie, euh, or des divinités, divinités linked to water and fertility, who are numerous. Nombreuses à l'eau et à la fertilité. Le dieu de la mort est assez présent à l'image de cette représentation, image with this depiction of a god through a human skull, representing the god of death. Donc, et symboliser le, le dieu de la mort. Euh, plus loin, ce seront des représentations euh, dans des sculptures, euh, de différentes tailles, du, du dieu de la plume ou du dieu de la plume, ou du dieu de la plume, ou du dieu de On va le retrouver, par exemple, dans des petites figurines en céramique, céramique ou, ou en pierre, ou en pierre le dieu du serpent à plume, le, le fameux Quetzalcoatl des Aztèques, eh bien, cet animal hybride qui combine à la fois donc, euh, la forme d'un serpent mais couvert de plumes, qui est à la fois un animal terrestre et un animal aérien, euh, qui manifeste aussi les relations entre le monde céleste et le monde souterrain, et est représentée de manière très importante à Teotihuacan, aussi bien sur des fresques murales, on voit cet animal peint de couleurs chatoyantes du Quetzal, cet animal tropical, le tropical bird that is a symbol of Mesoamerica. Et on le trouve aussi représenté sur les monuments, en particulier sur la pyramide du serpent à plume, dans un autre quartier de Teotihuacan, la Fétitadelle, où plusieurs dizaines de grands serpents à plume sont représentés, notamment avec la tête du félin et le corps du serpent. Le corps du serpent et le corps du serpent. Un autre dieu important est le dieu de la pluie, le dieu de l'orage, que les Aztecs plus tard appelleront Tlaloc. Celui-ci aussi est représenté dans de nombreux endroits de la cité de Teotihuacan. On le reconnaît en particulier à ses deux gros yeux cerclés comme jumelles. Et ce dieu est à la fois le dieu dispensateur de la vie au travers de l'eau, qui est vraiment source de d'agriculture. Ce dieu de, de la pluie, rain god, Tlaloc, Tlaloc, est aussi le dieu de thunder, tonnerre, hail, le dieu de la grêle, le dieu des orages dévastateurs, et donc aussi par certains côtés, il a une dimension guerrière dans la manière dont on honorait les anciens Aztèques. Anciens Aztèques. De manière générale, euh, general, les civilisations mésoaméricaines avaient une connaissance très très poussée de l'astronomie. Euh, le mouvement des planètes, le mouvement du soleil, soleil et de la lune n'avaient plus aucun mystère pour ces civilisations-là. Civilisation et d'ailleurs, leur système calendaire était particulièrement well élaboré et régissait même tous les fonctionnements de la société. Donc c'était de grands astronomes. Et d'ailleurs, on observe dans la découpage de la ville et dans certains actes qui structurent la ville, des calculs par rapport à des repères astronomiques. Donc ça, c'est incontestable que le degré de précision des calendriers et des mouvements des planètes des civilisations mésoaméricaines et de ceux de Teotihuacan en particulier était tout à fait exceptionnel et réalisé avec les connaissances en Occident. Les Aztèques ont le même calendrier euh, que les autres peuples mésoaméricains, la même façon de compter le temps, c'est-à-dire une façon euh, de compter le temps qui s'appuie sur calendar. deux calendriers principaux plus un calendrier euh, vénusien, donc les deux calendriers principaux c'est le calendrier solaire days. de 365 jours, le calendrier rituel de 260 jours, et donc pour un jour donné, on a so une date given dans day, les deux calendriers. We have a date in both calendars, which is an extremely precise way of controlling the flow of time, and therefore all ritual events depending on this calendar. L'ensemble de l'appareil rituel dépendait de ce calendrier. Euh, et donc, euh, il y a pour chaque for mois, month, pour chaque jour, for each day, euh, une divinité there is a deity who is the qui est la divinité protectrice et pour laquelle on va pratiquer un certain nombre de rituels. Donc, nous avons des informations très précises very precise grâce aux Espagnols, notamment euh, Spaniards, le, from the work le done travail by a effectué par euh, un franciscain qui s'appelle Saagoun, qui a enregistré énormément d'aspects euh, liés 
à la vie des, des Aztèques, aux quatre cultures, mais aussi à la vie domestique, but also euh, domestic life, à l'organisation sociale, social, à l'organisation organisation de l'agriculture, l'organisation de l'agriculture, etc. Donc on a He énormément d'informations. Mais évidemment, euh, so we have an enormous amount of information. Pour nous, but what is more difficult for us, archaeologists, to perceive is everything related to religious organization. Des rituels est très minutieusement décrit par The organization of rituals is very carefully described by Sayagun and brings us essential information on the celebration calendar. Notamment sur le calendrier, which le calendrier des fêtes, carries out which quelles fêtes month. on réalise, quel mois, etc. Writing in Mexico appeared only in the 12th century AD. It was used to register economic data and for historical and religious writings. Scribes wrote on various materials like agave fiber, deer skin, and beaten bark. Thousands of codex were destroyed by the Spanish at the time of the conquest. The writing of the Aztecs is not like that of the Mayans. With the Mayans, there is a syntax, the notion of time. It is true writing. For the Aztecs, writing is more like points of reference that are both visual and phonetic, here as well, but which probably serve to relay the oral tradition. Donc, l'essentiel des mythes, des traditions historiques, traditions conservées, transmises de génération en génération sous la forme d'une tradition orale, de contes qui étaient racontés à la foule lors de certaines fêtes, etc. En fait, ce sont des codes pour la transmission de transmission de cette tradition orale. Cette tradition de cette tradition orale. The Aztec Empire reached its peak in the early 16th century under the reign of Moctezuma. He had been an emperor for 17 years when the conquistador Hernán Cortés landed on Mexican soil in the spring of 1519. The arrival of the conquistadors sealed the end of Aztec domination. Cortés first allied himself with their enemies, the Spanish and their Native American allies arrived before Tenochtitlan, the capital, on November 8, 1519. Moctezuma greeted them peacefully at first. Then doubt and hostility set in and ended with a massacre of Tenochtitlan's population and the death of the Aztec leader. The city was then reduced to ruins on which Mexico City was built. When Cortes arrive, he arrive, uh... When Cortes arrives, he arrives to conquer. He knows of the existence of the Aztec Empire and its richness. His objective is to conquer. We are no longer in the age of discovery. He arrives at the head of a small army. Generally, we count around 450 men of war soldiers. Cortes arrives on the coast around Veracruz, where the Indians we call Totonacs are settled, who are tributaries of the Aztec Empire. From the beginning, these people who pay a tribute to the Empire will see in the arrival of the Spaniards the possibility of liberating themselves from the yoke of the Aztecs. They will rapidly ally themselves with the Spaniards and provide them with the troops they need to be victorious. Alors Cortés remonte donc vers Cortés will quickly climb up the high central plateau. He received by the Emperor Moctezuma II in the city of Teotihuacan. Moctezuma en fait le reçoit dans le palais de son père. Moctezuma receives him in the palace of his father. Et donc installe Cortés et ses troupes au centre du centre cérémoniel aztèque. Cortés installe Cortés et ses troupes au centre du cérémoniel aztèque. Et donc il y a une grande cérémonie aztèque. This is a great Aztec ceremony with music day and night. Human sacrifices are made inside the walls of the great temple. And there, the Spanish troops lose their self-control and massacre a good portion of the indigenous nobility who have gathered in the center of the ceremonial space for the celebrations. This is the Noche Triste. 
Et donc c'est le début. Night. En fait, Cortés, qui par sa diplomatie, Through sa prudence, diplomacy and prudence euh, a réussi à maintenir in maintaining a kind of status quo euh, for several months living with the Aztecs. Euh, avec les Aztèques, euh, a He began to amass the gold that they offered him. Offre. Euh, en fait, This là, will be the beginning of the war guerre, and the Aztec resistance. Aztec. Et donc, euh, the emperor Moctezuma, Moctezuma who was held prisoner, will be killed. Tué. Donc, euh, c'est un It système was an extremely hierarchical political system. On Cut off the tête, head and everything oui, collapses. Le système les Aztèques résistent, mais euh, il y a très rapidement un effondrement de cette structure, structure that has been politique so aussi puissante. Donc il faut à peu près deux, ans. deux ans entre l'arrivée des Spaniens et la fin de Tenochtitlan. Et donc euh, la capitale est rasée, the capital city is destroyed. Euh, on va édifier la capitale de la nouvelle Espagne. Donc on instaure l'ordre colonial power is directly established in the same place. Et tout, évidemment, the whole structure of the empire collapses at once. D'un seul coup. Les connaissances sur les Aztèques, en fait, ont été basées sur les Aztèques, sur les Aztèques, sur les témoignages. En fait, and on accounts the Spanish had made at the time of the conquest. They came into contact with these living civilizations at their peak. So we have an enormous amount of information that comes from texts, mostly written by the religious and by Franciscans in particular, for the time of the evangelization. Archaeology is much more recent. It had been hindered by the fact that the Aztec capital had been covered over by the modern city. Mais, But euh, over the years, années, we have still been able to accumulate a lot of information, archaeologically as well. North of Mexico City's central plaza, a number of Aztec buildings form the religious center, the Templo Mayor. It included one pyramid with two sanctuaries, temples, and also a college, a music school, and arsenals. The Templo Mayor was a great double pyramid with a pair of stairways finishing at two temples at the summit. Two principal deities were worshipped. They were at the top of the Aztec pantheon, that is to say, their various deities. There was Huitzilopochtli, the god of sun and of war, the god who guided them to the place they settled. And then the traditional god, at least the one that passed for the most traditional in the basin of Mexico City, the god of rain, of agriculture, and the settled population. Both are associated with the summit. The Templo Mayor is a the Templo Mayor, like many of these pyramids, opens orienté, towards the west. Ouvre vers vers l'ouest, donc c'est à l'arrière de. It is behind these pyramids the sun rises in the morning. Tous les matins, et, et donc euh, il donne sur une place, place qui était encombrée de bâtiments. Il est entouré d'autres bâtiments. Les fouilles qui ont lieu maintenant dans le centre de la ville de Mexico City. Excavations have taken place in the center of Mexico City for almost 40 years now. On a repris les fouilles in fact, they started the excavations again beginning in 1978 thanks to the discovery of a very large sculpture at the foot of the southern access to the main pyramid. It portrays the goddess of the moon dismembered by her brother, the sun god, Huitzilopochtli himself. Everything that was in the same area, winning over the buildings, which were often historic buildings from the colonial era, shows that there was an extraordinary Thanks to the excavations that there have been along with nearby construction projects on the streets or in blocks of colonial houses, we begin to reconstruct a map of this main enclosure. For example, there was work done in a building acquired by the Spanish that they made into a cultural center, which is just next to the current Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral. In doing this work, they had to redo all the foundations. They excavated what was underneath, and there are buildings that were part of the 78 buildings, which made up the heart of the city. 
Donc les fouilles euh, du Templo Mayor sont euh, The excavations of the Templo Mayor are extremely important for the understanding of ritual architecture. Euh, pour la connaissance de l'iconographie et même des rituels pour la connaissance aussi même des rituels puisque maintenant euh, on effectue euh, now des analyses carried out, notamment euh, des analyses analysis of the sur soil. les sols After the Spanish conquest in the 16th century, the Templo Mayor was destroyed and its exact location was forgotten. To dig the site of the Great Temple, archaeologists had entire buildings and shops raised down and cut into one of the main roads of the Mexican capital. Digs have brought to light 13 phases of construction, notably that of the pyramid's double staircase rising 45 meters high. In the colonial era, Native Americans had shown very little resistance against the conquistadors, who they considered to be superhumans, and the Spanish had carte blanche in the country. Donc les Espagnols arrivent en 1519. The modern city of Mexico uh, is built on the place where they used to be lakes. Lacs. Euh, les Espagnols ont... qui n'étaient pas habitués à gérer les ce Spanish type d'environnement avec une variation du niveau des lacs, des, des problèmes well. d'hygiène également. Euh, donc à partir au cours du XVIe siècle, il y a en fait une série, une série de, de catastrophes euh, liées à des arise. inondations, euh, la peste qui arrive, et donc euh, Les Espagnols, the Spanish, euh, who did not know how to manage this lakeside environment, had the idea of draining the lake. Ils vont mettre longtemps, ils vont long parce que c'est seulement à la fin du 19e siècle que va pouvoir the end of the 19th century that they will be able to eliminate these great lakes by digging a canal to help evacuate the water. Permet d'évacuer euh, les eaux. Et donc euh, aujourd'hui, il n'y a pratiquement plus de no lacs et la, la, la ville de Mexico a pu s'étendre sur ses anciennes surfaces lacustres. Donc la ville moderne se retrouve superposée the sur modern city la capitale Aztec. Aztec et donc, capital. euh, les fouilles sont des travaux d'archéologie urbaine qui se font à l'occasion, euh, par exemple quand il y a eu la construction like du métro, the construction of the subway, euh, ou quand il y a eu les travaux de restauration du centre historique, ce qui était le cas donc, au moment des fouilles du Templo Mayor. Of the marvelous lakeside city of Tenochtitlan, nothing remains today. The tentacular expansion of Mexico City has covered everything. The Aztec Empire went by in a flash. In less than 200 years, this humble nomad people became the masters of the Mexico Valley and its surrounding area. The Mexicas, as they called themselves, loved recounting the glorious epic of their lengthy wandering in the desert, the empire, they quickly developed and the submission of foreign city-states before them. They found legitimacy in the belief that their people had been chosen by the sun to lead the world. Today, the descendants of the Aztec represent 10 to 12% of the Mexican population. <laughs>